Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Valakar Alivane, back for some more Dungeons & Dragons Online. We are joined again with Shira and Falcorian. Um, now this quest here is located in the 12, um, right near the beginning there. It is bestowed by Merla, and it is in the Sleeping Spell. Now this quest here is very much like a quest out, like, from inside of Dirk's mind. It is weird, it is crazy. Um, and actually starts, uh, so we'll get in here, we'll get our buffs going. But the quest itself, it starts with a drinking game against some beholders. So once everybody gets inside here, um, I believe Falcorian is AFK. He's got some stuff going on, which, hey, it happens. So once you're in, you want to actually make your way up to the top. And you'll see Giant Beholder. Now he's kind of got the bartender here and he keeps pouring him drinks. Now essentially it's going to be a drinking game. Your objective is to keep your cups down faster than he is. So we'll talk to him here. So we got to drink him under the table. So they're going to keep drinking in these ciders. Now you want to drink these ciders as fast as possible. The higher your fortitude save, the better you are able to uh, keep them down. As you see, they keep drinking them there. I myself don't have the greatest fortitude. Um, so yeah, you got uh, Shira there who is a barbarian, very high fortitude save. Um, he's able to just pound them back. Now as you see, their drinks are getting towards the center. And once they got to the center there, that is it. We can now talk to the Barbarian. And they all just drop. The other way is you can actually just fight them. Now, once you do that, we do have servants and guest rooms. Um, which he, the bartender here will drop our guest key. And as we pick it up, as you'll notice, it kind of goes wonky. So we'll head through the guest rooms here. Now, in here, we got some rooms. A room off to the right here. It does have a mirror, and it doesn't seem like this is the one. So, heading through. We want to make our way all the way to our library door. And inside here we will have some enemies. Just simple enemies, beholders, thrack hounds, fortunately a plague reaper. Beholders, luckily are enough, are just baby beholders. And killing them will give us our kitchen key. Though, as you notice, when we attempt to get it, it flies off. Kind of spawning into other things. Alright, killing him though, kind of actually lets us pick up the key. And then it gives us a random loot chest here as well. Now, once we have our key, we can head down to the other sections and you'll notice that as we're now approaching we can hear enemies such as beholders and the like spawning in and we can also head into these side rooms so there's one of the guys and you just want to essentially fight them which will knock them unconscious allowing you to actually talk to them and free them. So here we go. And we'll just check our last room here. So there we 
we are. And again, person rescued. So at this point, you do want to make your way back to the beginning of the quest area. And we'll now be able to actually head through our servant. Oh, no. Our kitchen door. That was the kitchen key we had picked up. So inside of the kitchen here, again, we have a cook. We can talk to him. He doesn't really want to do anything. Because uh, everything's going to go insane. And we're going to be attacked by a bunch of ham bones and clams. So again, we just want to fight, kind of hold them off there as he goes through the kitchen. They are just, they are considered undead, so having a caster really, really helps, or sorry, a cleric really helps and essentially just hold them off. kitchen again it's, it's not too difficult after you fight enough it'll go away you'll be able to talk to him again freeing him doing so will also give you our blue basement key now you can use the key to actually enter in this section which does have kind of an optional boss And a whole lot of breakables. Once he's down, go ahead and finish off the rest. It does give us a nice little chest. As well, we also got ourselves a another one. chest here as well and again a large amount of breakables now once we have that here is our basement door we do want to proceed through that with that key that we uh, received now as you'll notice at the bottom here we do have a secret door now on the other side of the secret door there is a lever pulling this will unlock the chest and the chest is just simply free loot and then you want to head further in now once you kill everybody here that's all that we can do at this very moment but as you go to leave you kind of get a puzzle now this puzzle is interesting as you start to attempt to solve it it will kind of fly away and you actually gonna fight the puzzle piece tiles in order to open the door so it's it's interesting now another thing to point out is up top here once it goes into a the the weird Azorian mode it will actually open up a door here that we can hop in and actually get some more goodies. But again, that won't start until it becomes the weird Zorian mode. So first, we're going to have to head over to the door here. And there's the mode. So now you'll notice we got a beam of light here. You can actually head inside. And it provides you with a little chest and a waypoint portal that we can actually click to hop back out. At that point, you do want to go ahead and solve the puzzle here. Now you'll notice as you're playing, they are going to constantly 
cast some uh, guys. Now, you will also notice here that sometimes they'll change the orientation of where they were placed. Once you have it all placed and the puzzle solved, our door opens and heads to our end fight. So it is a super short quest. Now the end fight is again, a bit of an annoyance. Um, it's more, more of the same. And again, it locks in once you start the fight. So you do wanna make sure everybody is inside. And here you go. So again, same thing. What you need to do is solve the puzzles, or rather fight the guy as he's trying to solve the puzzle. Now you can slow him down by turning the puzzle pieces, which will actually cause him to slow down. So if you have multiple people in your party, it does help to have one person on a kind of Let's mess with the guy. As you can see, constantly turning this one sideways is going to slow him down. And while he's in that mode, he gets really, he does really get annoyed that you do it. But it does stop him from being able to solve it. And it puts him into that other mode quickly. Once you're done fighting him, clear up any trash that is left and then go ahead and grab your end loot. So it's a fairly simple, fairly straightforward, and fairly quick quest. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys later. Have a good one all.